my gosh. <sighs> Welcome to my channel. I'm Moon Sparkle, and I'm here to do an update towards my three-year vow of celibacy. It is my 28th month. Today is June 5th, 2022. What do I want to add? I am still celibate. Um, thank you, and welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for clicking like and thank you for leaving a comment. Where do I want to start? Um, just a brief spill. Um, chose to take a three year vow of celibacy um, to grieve, to mourn um, different areas of my life that I had never stopped to take time to grieve and mourn. And just taking time and space for me. I also took a vow of celibacy, a three-year vow of celibacy for personal growth, just to become the best me that I can become. Uh, I took a vow of celibacy for ancestral healing, to do some healing work ancestral-wise. Um, and so, yeah, that's just the brief spill. Yeah, that, that, that sums it up. Also, with the personal growth, to build my spiritual gifts. So... Um, that's a part of the personal growth, um, to grow and learn about money, to learn, grow and learn about my career, to learn and grow about just me being me. So three years to love and date myself and consider dating other people. So. And, um, you know, take three years to work on relationships and all that stuff. So that's pretty much the spill for the three-year vow of celibacy. What do I want to share this month? Um, let me go ahead and plug my tea. I'm drinking burdock root. My elder family, elder flower family came through and blessed me. Um, I say it's a care package, so that feels good. That care package was much, much needed. Um, although they are far away, I feel like I have my community still so um that that feels good i um feathers have come back into my life so i was up um walking my grand dog and sharing some plant medicine with nature and allowing it to share with me and a feather came across my path i will say about feathers i they came to me a lot in like 2019 and 2020 but then in 2021, I didn't see them as much. I would see them, but not as much. And now I'm noticing in 2020, they're like crossing my path again. So feathers are back into my life. Um, what do I want to start? Let's get into the tea. So I just, I want to start with my um, spiritual practices first. Last month I had taken um, pretty much a fast for my spiritual practices. Um, through the guidance of my cars and intuition that I just needed to build my own stuff. So I did take a break. The new, my practices, um, some practices never ended, like prayer and stuff never ended. Plant medicine never ended. But so with the new moon that we had, my practices came back in. So I brought them back in um, with a goddess card. And I brought them back in with um, a reading. I did a tarot reading. Uh, the Celtic cross reading I needed that one um, because of my moon cycle was around that period I um, yoni steam so now I have decided I'm going to yoni steam with um, my moon cycle instead of with the moons um, candles came back in uh, I was able to get my prayer closet organized so that's completely like what it needs to be um, what is uh, affirmations I listened 
to what never left affirmations I um my friend had told me about how she listens to affirmations of herself and so that was something that came in um on last month's update so I continue to do that one um continued to pray continue to medicate meditate um what came in with last month through because I had some challenges last month so what practices came in I'll share the challenges next but what came in was Reiki healing um that came back in last month just because I was very triggered and I learned how to do like a Reiki on like a community um with the plant so that came in my uh dream so my dreams were super super clear but I just didn't feel the need to write them down I just more so observed and watched how they came through so that was cool um what came back with the new moon was um I'm journaling not obsessively Uh, I have a burn book that I'm journaling in right now and my self-love journal I do that one and then my moon journal I'm doing that one and then free writing is kind of back in and free writing is where I find my poetry so that's coming back in Um, I will say the benefits of letting my tools go was I definitely could hear spirit a lot more Um, it wasn't obsessive it wasn't anxiety so I definitely could hear spirit a lot more with my tools um, with letting go of my tools what I will say um, that didn't that I didn't let go of when it comes to my inner child healing um, I had went and got my inner child some bubbles sidewalk chalk and let me just go ahead do some show and tell for y'all my inner child got this so you know she likes to braid here my inner child got some sidewalk chalk and my inner child got some bubbles um, and my inner child has been um, spending time with my yaya boys in the way that my inner child wants to spend time with them so that's been amazing just letting my inner child be out so letting go of my practices kind of opened up more space for my inner child to be so that was beautiful now last month a lot changed I had some challenges come through last month so I want to say almost the day after I recorded my last update I had to jump my car I had already saw that I was going to have to let go of my car but just not knowing how or whatever, how to do it or whatever. But um, I had already set a boundary with my car and my car was very much like, um, my car was very much like a sanctuary for me, like a mobile sanctuary for me. Um, My car's name was Michael, um, one after Archangel Michael and one after Burn Notice Michael. And so my car was just amazing. I got that car after my bankruptcy. I almost had that car almost four years. Um, The first year to two years, I didn't really do no work on that car and that car functioned well. When I got work done on that car, that car was immaculate. Um, So to let my car go, that was challenging. I had to junk it. Um, the day that they came to get the car or the day that I decided to jump the car um, there was a bird on top of my car had fallen out of the tree and it just gave me vibes of are you my mother and I brought the bird home and built a relationship I'll share a video at the end of the bird or whatever and you know I had to let the bird go so you know I learned a huge lesson like some mothers he might have fell out of his tree or he might have been pushed out his tree and he might have to figure it out so but that was beautiful to um, hang out with the bird. I named it Loki. First, its name was Lutlin, and then its name was Petrie. So, um, definitely a bird came through. Having to jump my car meant that I couldn't do the hikes anymore. So, um, what I had started doing was going walking um, to the lake with my dog, with my grand dog. Um, so, that had kicked in what um junking the car meant is like grocery shopping what that would look like so i have my groceries delivered um i'm back on hello fresh 
I'm just eating whatever I want on there. So the HelloFresh kind of changed the way that I walk because I need actually time to cook a meal. So I'm just walking whenever I get a chance and just eating my HelloFresh or whatever. Um, let's see. So that was, so my eating, so I had to, so what that also meant losing the car meant that any shopping that I needed to do needed to be done online. And so my finances have been improving, and I'll touch on that a little bit, to where I can start to spend and do things that I want to do, right? Well, I had did some orders on Amazon, and this, is, this triggered the fuck out of me. I had ordered like $60 worth of plant medicine with the intention to start sharing plant medicine with my family. And um, that was either stolen or thrown away because of where the Amazon delivery person put it was in between trash. Um, either it was stolen or thrown away because the trash people had just left a note on my door the day before that they don't take boxes. Then um, I am re, I'm starting my lock journey. So I had ordered some tools to retwist my locks. And I literally heard when that was delivered. And when I went to go get it on my break, it was gone. That really triggered me because that was like, no, that was flat out stolen. And the way that my apartments are set up, so this is my perspective. This may not be what actually happened. The way that my apartments are set up, I share a door with my neighbor. The building that's in front of me does not face me. It faces another way. And there's people who are above. So what it made me feel like, to be real honest with you, is that one of my neighbors stole from me. And because I have been having an issue with one neighbor, I really just felt all that energy towards that 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 neighbor stole from me so that triggered me a lot and what that triggered was me to go into um using my reiki and really just realizing not more so like reiki on my neighbors because when anytime you do reiki it's for you and that person so it's a mutual thing more so like how can i get back grounded how can i find my peace how can i just deal with all these emotions um, but the same neighbors like blasting music and bass and two, three o'clock in the morning. So with me being triggered, it led to a spiral of triggers of me getting up at three o'clock in the morning, doing Kundalini, which uh, upset the neighbor um, and me just spiraling, like re literally reacting. But in that reacting was I set up um, an ancestral altar in my, in my front door, which is beautiful. And I have like a regular altar. What brought that to me to do that was um, a friend that I had um, when I used to hang out at Sunset Kava. I noticed that she had stuff in front of her door and she had shared an experience with me with a neighbor. And I literally just was able to draw from her experience and say, this is how I'm going to protect myself through this. So I have an altar at my front door, which is super intentional. And I set different ancestors out there, even ancestors who I don't have pictures of just to put their name on there, just to have the presence. I will say that um, last month we were in a Mercury retrograde. I mean, not a, we were in a Mercury retrograde and we were in Eclipse Gateway. And I know a lot of energy came through that. So last month was heavy with the new month coming in and my practices, it's been a lot more peace between my neighbor and myself. I ended last month with a self hypnosis from Anna Thompson, who I had um, been working with herself, self hypnosis is on um, Spotify and so in working with her her um, stuff she had an anger management one and I just learned so much about my anger it was a huge release I learned that um, what, what I'm operating now in is in healthy anger because one of my um, Reiki prayers is that I learned in mystery school but one of my Reiki prayers is in my anger lies peace and power and so my I'm just learning so much more about how beautiful my anger can be if it's channeled out correctly. And so um, just practicing a healthy anger and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that, that was very triggering, but a lot of core practices came out of that anger to where like now I'm working with trees because I understand that trees are literally a huge network that, that network underground and send nutrients to each other. And so doing Reiki with the trees and just receiving their medicine and just just the trees are really deep for me. They've always been super deep for me. I am a straight tree hugger in this bitch. So, um, yeah, a lot of that came out of um, last month. I did end up removing the Reiki symbols from outside of the house um, 
because I realized that I was operating a little bit in anger when I was practicing my Reiki, literally convicted, because every time I do my Reiki, I do my prayer, and we had a situation where I had to call the police, and I just went out and uh, redrew the Reiki symbols, and I realized, like, no, that's not how that works. It's That's not, that's not healthy anger. Um, and so I removed the Reiki symbols. Of course, they're on my patio, and I'm still working with them. And really learning with healthy anger, as much as I felt uncomfortable last month, I really was operating in a lot of healthy anger, like going to my practices, pulling out Reiki, um, creating an ancestry altar, taking my inner child on walks in the morning. So I, I learned that all of that was a healthy way for me to display my anger. Um, definitely went into my uh, Nigerian bag with some of my stuff in my anger. So I will say that I definitely went into some of uh, my Nigerian cultures last month. They definitely came through Yemiya and just prayer and speaking in tongues and walking around houses and putting down plant medicine. So definitely I went um, with some people would consider dark magic, um, but I know what my intention was in using it. So um, that's the, the spill of me being triggered last month. What I also want to say um, about last month that, you know, it was Mother's Day and my mother gave me a really amazing gift. I always love reading books. Like, that is such an inner child thing. I love reading. Ever since one of my uh, favorite teachers said that the more you read, the smarter you get. So, um, I the app that she gave me was Libby. It's where you can connect to your local libraries and you can have audiobooks or you can read books. So last month, I really started reading. Now with me and books, sometimes I don't finish them to the end. I have this relationship with books. Um, I read just enough and I grasp the book. Um, I'm sure I should. Let me take a pause because I am definitely in a flow. I hear my arms. Let me just take a breath. I hear myself. I've been working on arms and realizing I just need to breathe. So with reading books, I just have, I would like to read to the end, but sometimes that's just not how it happens and it is what it is. And sometimes I'll come back to the book again and read more. But the books that I um, got to partake in last month was Harriet Tugman. I read a book called Hex. That was a fictional book about um, a witch who was heartbroken, who put a hex on her ex. And I'm gathering they had a happy ending, but it, she she really moved in some shifty energy. She really didn't know um, what she was moving in. She just she just didn't know. So just working through that, and then um, I listened to. So I was reading Harry Tugman. I was listening to Hex. I listened to Yvonne Orgy's book, um, How Jesus Bamboozled Me. That was a really good book. That definitely brought me closer to like my Christian roots. Um, currently, I. I'm listening to Louise Hayes. Uh, I think it's Life Loves Me. I'm not listening. I'm reading that book. I listened to, someone had wrote a book on Nipsey, so I listened to some of that. I tried to listen to Issa's book, but I think because I had watched so much Insecure, I just really couldn't um, get into her book. I listened to another book about relationships. Um uh, that he's just not that into you. I am, with my ex reaching out to me in my last update, it pulled up some energy letting me know that I still had some grieving to do with that relationship. So definitely that. This is a long video, but it is what it is. Back to my practices, um, vision boarding. That never left because I have that above my desk at work. Okay, I talked about my challenges, items being stolen, okay. And um, I'm going to mention these things and then I'm going to close with that because we're going up on 20 minutes. 
thank you for anyone who watches. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, last month with came through because I was having challenges with my money as far as like I wasn't, <clears throat> I didn't know how to set up my direct deposit with my job because with my job we could have multiple direct deposits. So I mean, I mean, I could set up money to move different ways and so I didn't know how to <laughs> figure out the how to set up my direct deposits and my supervisor tried to help me and she ain't know either so and then finally my daughter got tired and was like this is probably what you're supposed to do and then HR sent me an email and I figured out how to make my money move um, interesting enough ever since I became full-time my first two paychecks were messed up where they had to be mailed and this is where what I love about tests and lessons and stuff like that so when I became when I was temp I was getting paid every week early when I moved full time, my um, because I didn't know how to set up my direct deposits, I was waiting for my check to come in the mail and then figure out how to cash it with the online bank only. And so rent was late and so all that type of um, anxiety was coming up. So finally when I figured out my direct deposits and figured out I need a local bank and all this other stuff, it was time to get paid and I knew I had my stuff set up. Wednesday come, money didn't hit. Thursday come, money didn't hit. Friday came, I'm just like, I'm going to just chill. I'm going to chill. Money didn't hit. The minute I log on to my workstation, the first post, then nobody get paid. And my job is so amazing that we all got paid. We got paid Friday. They made that money drop. And if anybody's money was messed up, they would have paid fees. But because my money was already messed up previously, I didn't incur any fees. So that was a beautiful lesson to learn that I'm always, like, looked out for. So that was amazing and now I have a local bank and I have my own banker which is new for me so with my money what I'm going to be doing a friend an old friend um, had was always telling me about 50 30 20 50 30 20 and I never could see it because I never had money free enough to see it but now because my money is free I'm setting up 50 30 20 so three three bank accounts 50% goes to um, bills and rent and stuff like that. Um, necessities, 30% is fun and 20% is savings. So that's how I'm making that move. And then um, my rent, even though all that stuff happened, let me let the car do its little thing. Even though all that stuff happened, um, everything I was able to pay my rent on time with no late fees, so that was beautiful. Um, I'm doing good at my job, like excelling at my job to where I was asked, like, what do you want from this company? Like, wh what do you want to do? So I'm doing good at my job. I had um, my oldest son is had went to the military I had shared that with you guys and he's out and so he has his orders and stuff so after that that was a couple of months of of well, let me let him drive away So I was speaking about my uh, son, S-U-N. I knew that I needed to do some healing work with him, which is why I came down here, which is one of the reasons why I came down here. And when I got down here, I, I instantly was smacked in the face what the healing work was, and it was just that I had en enabled him and not really allowed him to grow. And so, you know, some events transpired in October and now we're on the other side of all the events transpiring and we were able to have a conversation that gave both of us the opportunity to grow for me to learn about myself as a parent and a person and learn about him as a parent in person and so i'm really happy about um 
how that relationship is growing and evolving and getting healthy. So that came, um, that happened. And um, at this point, I so far still have seen the Yaya ya- 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 ya Boys once a week. This time it was different. It was so amazing. Um, we went to Aquatica, uh, myself and the and um, my son and the Yaya ya Boys, and it was just really beautiful. Um, my inner child was so happy. What Aquatica was like for me was, I've never been to a Vegas pool party, but it seemed like a very healthy, friendly Vegas pool party. Um, Appropriate music was playing. Of course, people had alcohol. There was bars like in between. There was so many pools all over. Um, There was food. You could get a cabana if you wanted to. It was just so nice. Like, I think that's the coolest way to be introduced to water. But it was amazing. I had so much fun. I really, really did. I so did. I got to be a yaya. My inner child got to shine. And I got to enjoy water. So, and then after that, um, the my son dropped the boys off. And my son and I went to eat. We went to a little bougie restaurant and eat. And that was really nice. Because it's like, he is one of my best friends. My children are my best friends. And I have... Um, a childhood best friend who is still my best friend to this day she's my best friend she was my first best friend she came before my children um there's so many best friends you can have and I say we say best friends but these people are life partners they're so my soul companions like I got a whole team and they happen to be like my children and stuff so that's dope so it was nice we went to um this restaurant and this nice hotel and when we got there People were, um, there was a wedding happening. It's the Riverwalk. It was a hotel off the Riverwalk in Texas, which I've been wanting to go. I have not experienced the whole Riverwalk, but I got to experience that corner, and that was amazing. So that was cool. Um, Also, my best friend, I say childhood best friend, but she's my best friend. Um, She reached out to me, and we had the longest conversation, and it was good to have that conversation because it feels good to get back to yourself and parts of you that maybe you discarded. So that was beautiful. Um, Other energies reached out to me through this period, like um, my lady who I worked with on my old job who was a person I loved, who felt like an enemy. This shit was really weird, but reached out to me, and so I don't know where that's going to go. I'm open. Um, who else reached out to me? I used to work at a daycare center in my old life, and this daycare baby, him and his mother, have continued to keep in contact with me, so I got to see pictures of him. And one of my cousins who we built a relationship last year, he was like one of my favorite cousins. All my cousins are my favorite cousins, but it's just, it hit different with all of them. Um, all, and let me say that again. All my cousins are my favorite cousins. Some of them not going to like that, but that's what it is. So um, it hits different with all of them. And um, he reached out to me, so I got to talk to him. And then I got to text my other little favorite cousin who's not going to like that. I said, everybody my favorite cousin. Me and her got to text. And um, also in my TV life, let me add that, because TV life is important because it is an influence on me. I finished she That was an interesting story. I'm watching Love on the Spectrum, the American version. I'm watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the old sitcom. I'm still watching Punky Brewster. Oh, I went back to watch Love Life. I'm watching Lisa Ling on HBO. There's this comedian, she identifies as lesbian. Um, I'm enjoying her. What else? I'm going to add one more thing and then I'm going to let y'all go because this is coming up on 30 minutes. And I'm just happy. Let me just mention my elder flower family again. I'm just really, really happy because now I have like dialogue with one of my teachers that I didn't have before. One of my um, elder flowers like roots where we were still sitting with each other. Um, she and I are in dialogue again. I'm hoping that continues. So I'm happy. I'm really happy. Oh, shoot, I almost thought I met a man, white boy, cute, had a sunflower on his ring finger, just was living about that life, but I'm so glad. I just enjoyed the the fact that I got to meet him, but he was definitely not the person. 
And let me say that. I'm enjoying me. So thank you. Thank you. This is like my longest update ever. So I guess I'm more comfortable with myself. <sighs> thank you. Bye, Petrie. They said to put you back. Gonna miss you. No, 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 don't crawl up. Bye.